Welcome to another stunning episode of The Greatest Music Ever Created and How It Ruined Our Lives with special guest vocalists Max Double Up. Take the power back. Oh, oh, hey, how you doing? Uh, it's Eric Braverman here. My friends call me EB. You should probably call me Seshla, the rights wrangler. Um, out here today, kind of telling stories about protesting and getting up against the man that people are doing all over the world in Athens and London and New York City and Oakland and Omaha and everywhere. And, you know, it comes to mind Max Cavalera, South America's greatest heavy metal star ever. That's all he sings about is this stuff. Not taking it from the man, not taking it from government and the military and standing up, refuse, resist, and the whole thing. Go get the new Cavalier conspiracy album. That's that that stuff could be the theme of this movement. Let's go see if they even have a theme. And maybe they should make a theme. Did you work? Fight the power back. Here we are in the secret soulfly compound. I don't know what jungle it was. They had me drugged in a sack over my head when I was brought here. Max Cavalera. You seem not to be a person, you don't like wars, you don't like the idea of militaries, you don't like, you know, you're, you're a person that doesn't like police, all those kind of things, it seems from your songs. Right. Yet every time I see you, you're wearing camouflage. Right. Paradox. What is, what's, what is, what is with having such a message of peace? The whole soul fly concept, but every time I see you, you look like you're going into battle. Right. Well, I, I don't know. I've always liked, uh, even though I don't, you know, I, I, I'm against war. You know, I think war is wrong, you know, you just kill the wrong people all the time. Since I was a kid, I always liked to, to um, military stuff. I like clothes, you know, so when I was uh, um, real little, my grandfather, he was in the Italian army. He gave me like a Italian hat, like an army hat, and I really liked the hat, and I wear the hat in the house. And then later on, I started wearing camouflage pants. At one point, became like a trademark. I just I wear that thing every day and on tour. And then one time, I look outside the bus, and there was like a hundred fans wearing the same camouflage pants, the gray, black and gray cut up. Which I cut off because it was too hot in Holland one time. It was like 200 degrees. In Holland. Yeah, and it was summer. And I was like, I had to go do a dynamo uh, festival. And I was like, I can't wait. I can't take this heat anymore. So I grabbed a scissor and I cut off the pants just because it was too hot. You said your, your great grandfather was in the Italian army? Yeah. Well, let me even think of wonder. When I first met you guys or heard of you, and it was almost at the same time, it's like, here's this band, Sepultura, and then I started meeting you guys because of Phil Rind. That crazy. He's one of my best friends. Well, the minute I heard your names, Igor and Max, and then I heard Brazil, I started thinking Boys from Brazil. I don't know if you ever saw that movie. Yeah, actually, I saw it, I saw it last week. <laughs> so I'm thinking, I'm thinking, hey, phone call for somebody. Um, I'm thinking that, how is that, Ty? Where, where were you from? Where was the relatives from? I don't think you were. I'm not saying that you and your brother were a genetic experiment to become Hitler. Right. Uh, no, we, but we're, we're actually uh, Igor. Euro, European, you know, we're, we're our descendants, like most of the Brazilian people are not really Brazilian, are European descendants, you know, like Andreas is a German. His family is all from Germany and Austria. My family was from uh, Italy and Yugoslavia. I find out we, through some ancestor background thing, find out they, they went as far as Yugoslavia when it was still Yugoslavia, you know. And uh, and because of that, I, about the names, I don't know, my real name is Massimiliano. It's an Italian name. Maximiliano. Massi, with S. Oh, okay. With, okay. with two S. Okay. Which is really weird. And and when I was a kid, my family name, was, they, they call me Massi. That's how my, my, my brother still call me today, Massi. But I was real young, and they, at the same time, people started calling me Max in school because they couldn't say my whole name, Massimiliano. So teacher would be like, uh, Maximi Max, just cut off in half. Then the family started calling me Max, and then just got a 
in the BMX. And Igor, I have no idea where my mom got that name or my dad. Some <laughs> Russian thing. I'm I've not, just. I, it's, and it's not a. It's not a face, false name, by the way. People think it's made up no, for I, the band, and it's not. That's his real name. I just thought. Minute I heard that, I thought Nazi war criminals escaped to Brazil, and these are their children. Right. So that's not, you're good. not too far off. From <laughs> uh, Why are you here for Occupy Wall Street? <laughs> where do you want me to start? Wherever you like. Well, a the, my number one thing is. We need term limits. When they wrote the Constitution, probably the average age was like 37. Well, what if we got a good guy in there? Wouldn't we want to keep him forever? If, name, since I can remember uh, John F. Kennedy, uh, Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, uh, Cesar Chavez. I, I don't remember anybody else since then. Max Cavalera, Max Cavalera, so, uh, South American musician and well, I'm not, known singer of protest <laughs> rock songs. Well, that's it. It, that, that just don't. Hey, you know the Occupy, uh, the Occupy movement doesn't have a theme song yet. Do you know what theme? What would be a good theme song for them? Be like a, uh, be a revolution, like a Slayer song or a, a Metallica song? No, not definitely not Metallica. We would have to have something, you know, along the lines of Revolution or Jim, something Jimi Hendrix. You know, that's what I'd say. Thank you so much. Or Jimi Hendrix is a very heavy metal musician, though. But I like Jimi Hendrix. I grew up with Jimi Hendrix. Do you think Jimi would be here for the protest? Hell yeah, he'd be here. Another unique thing you do is you, you play the guitar, but you got rid of two of the strings, and you're only the, the only four string guitar player in the in the world. Like, what are your? Is that like? Did you? Did that just happen because you found yourselves never using the high notes, or how? What? I still remember perfect. It was a a practice in in Brazil. Um, and when I was um, practicing with Sepultura in Paulo's house. It's really fucked up building head in the back of his house the thing looked like world war three and the string broke and i look at my roadie and i had like 20 bucks on me and i was like well here i got 20 dollars we can buy a new set of strings and replace them or we can buy beer and i look at my roadie like buy beer and screw the strings so it was like you know like and then after that People start saying, just leave it. It like, kind of looks cool like that, you know. And then another one break, so it was down to four. And I was like, well, I just use four. So I ended up just using four from that point on. So, so I, I used the money, I bought beer, got drunk, stayed with four strings. Wow. So once again, the good side of alcoholism, again, makes it totally unique. Yeah. Uh, now, didn't you ask to have those custom made? Didn't the guitar companies think you were a nut or did they like it because it was well I know that uh, ESP got some phone calls from parents of the kids that got my guitar and they call back and they say the guitar is defective you're missing two strings <laughs> and they reply well that's how Max uses you know <laughs> so if you bought a Max guitar you're gonna get four strings. Um, I remember being on one tour uh, that you guys were playing on, and someone came running up to me and said that you had just barfed on Eddie Vedder. Yeah, <laughs> that happened on the uh, Sepultura Ministry tour. I got really drunk one night after the after Sepultura play. And I was drinking uh, rum, I think, and um, I started mixing with whiskey. And anyway, all the all the Ministry guys. Or back in their bus, I got, I, I went into their bus to kept on partying, you know, so they, they had liquor there. So I started, you know, hey, Al, hook me up, man, you know, I want some more booze, you know. <laughs> and they start drinking, and they're all sitting in the back of the bus. And then um, Eddie Vedder sat right here. He's like, hey, I'm Eddie Vedder. What's up? I'm Max. I'm all fucked up, you know. And then um, <clears throat> I got... Um, I, I drank one more more drink and I just went all back and I like I couldn't help it and just went bleh, right on his lap and it was like holy shit he got up and cleaned up and he sat down and then I remember my sister won his autograph so after bar for him I asked him for an autograph for my sister <laughs> and he gave me the autograph and I gave it to my sister he is a nice man. He was a nice guy. You know, Mark. I want to thank you for doing that for the metal fans of the world. But that is very nice of him just to not throw you out and right. just be like, okay. Yeah. Um, why, why do you think people don't understand the message of Jesus anymore? 
Well, because they've been uh, hoodwinked by the merger of politics and religion that started back in the 80s with the moral majority. Uh, a whole segment of the Christian church that believes that God is a Republican and an American. And therefore, they can do pretty much whatever they want to do because this is God's what, well, well, But not to interrupt you, but doesn't, no, that, yeah. doesn't that mean that they're mentally ill, uneducated, or something, they're they're mad about something? I mean, there's something's wrong with somebody that thinks God is, is an American. Yeah, I know. Here. This is our nanny. She was from Mexico, and she went there. She went to Mexico, and this this is roadkill. And her her cousin or somebody from her family put it on the plate like this, and all fucked up, because she knew we had a, a wall of masks. So she wanted to bring a present, so she brought that from Mexico, and it's probably some roadkill. <laughs> this is roadkill. Yeah. She got. <laughs> Look at that. Do you know the story on all these? You said this one was evil. What's a yeah, that's, that's a voodoo mask, man. That's an African voodoo mask. Are you afraid that it could bring bad spirits into you? I don't believe in that. Do you believe in anything like that? Aliens, ghosts, angels, magic, yeah, whatever? Yeah. What? Yeah, like... Uh, What's something you believe in that would be uh, not a normal Well, I, I don't say I don't believe in, in voodoo. I think voodoo does exist, but I don't believe a bind is going to bring stuff to our Because you're not practicing anything like that. Right. Why are you down here today? I'm really? Trying to raise awareness about the corruption in the government and the big corporations? Why isn't there more people down here? Just because Arizona is so like uh, backward and rednecky and good old boy and a lot of Republicans and well, I think a lot of people want to be down here but they either have to work, go to school and you know, maybe some people are afraid if they're seen here they might lose their jobs or how far are you willing to go? Uh, the the movement doesn't seem to have a, a theme song yet. Do you, what, what do you think would be a good theme song for the for the movement? I'm thinking like what um, what you know Black Sabbath or Slayer song would be a good theme song for the movement. Uh, perhaps something by Rage Against the Machine. Perhaps Take the Power Back or Guerrilla Radio. Since you've been doing Soulfly, you've changed members a lot, and you also have a lot of guests that come in to to play on things. It seems like every Soulfly album has at least a guest on it. Right. Uh, is that like, do you do that on purpose as part of the formula? Like, let's get new people in all the time and let's get, you know, different influences or how, how's that plan go? Yeah, well, the guest is something that started in uh, in Sepultura days. I think the early guests we had was, uh, the, was in Brazil. Some Brazilian guys did some stuff and then went all the way to get more famous people with uh, when we did Chaos AD, we had Jello Biafra from the Dead Kennedys writing the lyrics for Biotech is Godzilla. And that was really cool. I always liked collaborations. And then uh, again on Roots, we had uh, Mike Patton did a song called uh, uh, Look Away and with John from Korn as well. And that was really cool. And I always like I like the the interaction with uh, other musicians. It just seems like you do it more. Like there's a conscious effort to include other music and other musicians in what you do. Yeah, I like do. You know, it's it's something that I liked back then, and I still like now. But it seems like you're changing your own band too. Like there's different bass players. Yeah, yeah, that was something. Player, different drummer. Soulfly started like that anyway because the first album. We made it with a guitar player called Lucio, which is a Brazilian guy, and he could not stay in the band. So right from the beginning, the album came out, and I needed more. I needed people. I need replacement was was needed. And yeah, I think it's cool because it, it look, looking back now on the albums, they all sound a little bit different because of that. Because they have different people playing, and they had different flavors to it. Is there anyone that you wanted to have that you couldn't get? Yeah, I tried the guitar player of Bad Brains. When I first <laughs> made Soulfly, I call him, I call his manager, and he was just really a lot of money. He wanted just a lot of money. Mm. And he was like, can't do it. I, I can't pay that much, you know. Um, so, that kind of Bad stuff. brain. But, um, this is a wall that we we made. We actually, we put a frame on it. I signed this a long time ago. 
we are what we are, and then Dana signed it, and Gloria signed it, and then we, we asked Sean to do something, and he made a little alien guy with three eyes. Thanks for the memories, because he spent a whole week here with us. Making Sean Lennon stayed here a week. Making the song with us and stuff. That's rock and roll history right there, classic stuff. What would the world be like without Slayer? What would, the world, what would the world be like without Slayer? How different would our lives be? It would suck, man. Slayer is such a good band. You know, um, I actually remember buying like the Halting the Chapel in Brazil with my brother and playing it. And we thought the we thought the rotation of the of the vinyl player was wrong because it was too fast. And went on and checked. It's like, no, man, they actually they are playing this fast. And it was like, whoa, we had to rethink our old thinking because we had some songs. That was the beginning of Sepultura. But a bunch of slow songs, we threw all those away. We start playing fast. You got to go fast like Slayer, you know. That's Metal Hammer. What, was, what were you winning? Let's see here. All right. Sick. Sick. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't say. It must have been for some for soul flight. So they just say hammer of words. Yeah, you think they? I guess they never had a chance to etch on there for you. It's a nice reward. All right. And there's some MTV ones. <laughs> well, for territory. Yeah. Whoa. That was for territory. That was for. Uh, I didn't know MTV gave out any intelligent awards. Yeah, MTV Brazil. Oh, MTV Brazil. That explains it. Yeah. In America, they gave that award to Pink.
point, since you receive a good authority, you've played in all these, a lot of countries that other bands don't play in, you've kind of played in, what do you think the most metal place on earth is? Probably Argentina. Argentina's got the craziest crowds. They're so into metal because when you play there, they camp outside your hotel. Like 300 of them to stay outside your hotel. And one time I was there with Sepultura. Uh, and I look outside the hotel and there was all these 300 guys sleeping there, you know, and I felt bad. So I took my whole suitcase, all the clothes I brought from, from the tour, throw them out of the window. So next morning I come to the show, because everybody's wearing my shit. <laughs> all the people come to get autographs. They got my jacket, <laughs> they're wearing my pants, you know, Gloria's like, it looks like your jacket. It's like, yeah, yeah, last night I threw everything out of the window. They definitely love the metal there. Because some of the best shows I ever played in my life were in Buenos Aires. You know, I played there with Soulfly and with Sepultura. It was just amazing, amazing crowd. You know, it's the kind of crowd that you do, you do like three encores and they, the whole place would not leave. And they'll be chanting your name for like 15 minutes. So you go back and you play one more song. 15 minutes later, they are still there screaming. All the lights are on. They do not leave. They want. They want more. <laughs> how do you, How do you keep your ego in check while that's going on? By throwing my clothes out of the window. <laughs> <laughs> By throwing your clothes out of the window. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. Protest. All right. Refuse. Resist. All the time. What have we learned this This time we learned Max Cavalera, South America's greatest heavy metal star of all time, is a cool guy who cares about people, and you should always listen to the Soulfly and Cavalera conspiracy lyrics that are telling you you don't have to take all this stuff, and you can fight against the government and against your boss and against just bad people you, you deal with. Another one. Oh wow! And that was for uh, that was for uh, Orgasmatron, the, the, the Motorhead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have that. I have my, that's in my YouTube account. That's one of the songs I picked from you to it, keep it, in my it, YouTube. It's my song. favorite one. It's like oh. Soulfly in America, world album. That's your favorite. Why is that your favorite? Just because it, because it's Soulfly and it's the first album and it was such an, it was a hard album to make because it was the first one and it and it. It's it, quite it, emotionally it, hard it, for it's, you. It's so good.